How you doing guys? Alright, it's a Musicians on Couches Quickie again. And here to help me introduce the Quickie is my new character. I don't know why I'm doing this. Sock Puppet Pesci. Hey everybody, how you doing? Sock Puppet Pesci over here. And I know what he's talking about, Quickie. He's talking about him. You're a sock puppet. What do you know about this kind of stuff? More than you think. Remember, I'm his right hand. Alright, enough. All right, today, real quickie, we're going to get right to it. We've got Colin Peterick, we, or Peterick, I'm not sure. Jim Peterick. We've got Rocky, Sylvester Stallone, Eye of the Tiger. we got Conversation about growing up with a famous, famous guy who wrote, who wrote one of the most iconic tunes in history. Anyway, we're going to go right to it. Three, two, one. Here we go with the clip. Enjoy it. If you like it, I'll link the larger video in the descriptions. Let's go! You have a very cool story. I did. I did my research. Well, the producer did again. Very little research. He did very little. Uh, but um, uh, we would be remiss if we didn't talk. So, so I was a music director on Carnival Cruise Lines for ten years, and I, I played drums. I, I led the band, and I don't think we started a show without the song "Vehicle." <laughs> so I just want you to be aware of that. Uh, written by your dad. Uh, yep. Uh, in, in the band The Eyes of March. That's right. <laughs> Fantastic. So let's talk about that little, that family dynamic coming up. Because your, I mean, your dad wrote so many hits, um, uh, Eye of the Tiger, uh, and, and of course, Vehicle is so well known. Da -da 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 -da, that horn line is like, you can't, you can't do that horn line and not everybody know what you're doing once you do that horn line. It's iconic, yes. Yeah, it's an iconic line. So growing up in that atmosphere, and, and I read that on, on your, uh, your album, you played all the instruments. On a, on a lot of it, I did. Yeah, I ended up playing the drums. I was like the, you know, self-produced. I did drums and keyboards, percussion, vocals, background vocals, just layering stacks and stacks and right, stacks. Right, right. Like some of my some of my favorite artists that did the same thing, Todd Rundgren, yeah. um, you know, Mike Oldfield. McCartney put out several albums where he plays everything. And, and I'm exactly. a big fan of his, his uh, the later ones were okay, but I, I'm a big fan of the very first McCartney album where he just played everything. And the, yeah. Great songs on uh, uh, well, um, Every Day I Just Want to Be With You. That's a great song. And mm -hmm. plays. Um, so in growing up in that household with your dad writing hits, was he was he home? Was he touring? Did he encourage you? Did you jam with him? Let, talk, let's talk about that for a bit. Yeah, he was home a lot. Um, some of my fondest early memories are just wait, uh, being woken up by the sound of him playing grand piano in our living room uh, at 6 30 7 in the morning and at the time i was like just you know shut up i'm trying to go to sleep i got it's a school day whatever i'm trying to sleep in but looking back i think those uh early morning lullaby wake-up sessions are kind of what put the bug in my brain that hey this music thing is is more than just a pastime you know this is an important thing and right 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 yeah and, and so did you did you gravitate toward a particular instrument first or did you kind of like knock around everything like you do or or I, just, I mean just having the grand piano around uh ever since i was a kid it's always just easy to walk up to it and just start plunking notes right, so right. you know i would uh i'd go there and just you know play this the first song i ever learned is the thunder and lightning where you literally just play the lowest note and the highest note and go boom and i remember thinking i was so powerful that i had the the ability to play such a wide range of notes as like a two-year-old, you know, it's just, it's empowering. So I definitely gravitated towards piano first. 
And I, I, I went into, I took piano lessons. I took music theory class at school. And then eventually, you know, my dad taught me some basic guitar chords and then just um, learning how to play drums, kind of self-taught. And then eventually uh, I kind of wrapped everything together in a way that works for my songwriting style and my production style, you know? What do you consider yourself? What's the, what's your primary instrument? Uh, I would consider myself primarily as a songwriter. Okay. So it kind of takes okay. elements of every, every right. instrument that I know how to play, but I'm probably most proficient at uh, keyboards, uh, you know, pianos, working out harmonies and chord progressions on a keyboard for sure. Well, so I want I want I, I don't know when, uh, when, when Eye of the Tiger came out, which was, you know, dan, 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 great. Another, another iconic lick that once you hear it, uh, I, uh, I make, although I still tour, I used to tour with Dick Wagner. I don't know if you know he was, who he was. Hmm. He was Alice Cooper's guitar player and he played for Lou Reed and I toured with him for a long time and, and Mark Farner from Grand Funk. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I have a, I teach, I make most of my income from teaching at Guitar Center and uh, teaching drums, obviously. And uh, my administrator's 23 years old and I told her I was interviewing you and I told her who your father was and I just sang the lick to Eye of the Tiger. And she goes, oh, the Rocky tune, Eye of the Tiger. And she's like 22. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Way before she was alive and she knew the tune. So um, how did that affect you growing up? Did, did people around you know who your dad was? And uh, did they treat you differently or anything like that growing up in that kind of family? Well, I always tell people because I get asked this question a lot. I mean, I didn't know I didn't know I was special. You know, I didn't know any different. So I knew that it was kind of strange. Like, why are people coming up to talk to my dad at restaurants, but not other people's dads at restaurants? Right, so that right, was kind right. of like my my baseline. And um, but yeah, I mean, I, I meet people every day that has that that song has affected their lives in so many ways. And I think that song is uh, you know my dad always tells a story about how Rock, uh, not Rocky, but uh, Sylvester Stallone called, called him and left a message one day and they connected and he asked him to write a song that would outlive both him, that would outlive both of them. And my dad's like, okay, no problem, let's, let's do it. And uh, that's the story of how that song started. And I think it, it's a testament that, you know, people are still listening to it, still using it to motivate themselves at the gym, motivate themselves to get through illness. Yeah, yeah. It's a great song and it's, it's iconic. So it's always a thing to me when, People have, it's, it's one thing to write one iconic tune, like Vehicle, but your dad has a couple of iconic tunes, yeah. like I said, where, you, where if you, if you, you know, you hear five notes of it and you can tell the name of the song, the band who wrote it, and about what year it came out. And of course, with uh, Eye of the Tiger, what movie it's connected to and yeah. star it's connected to, all of that. And that's, that's a major deal. So obviously, talent in your family is somewhat genetic. So <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, you know, I usually cut these things up into clips because uh, I get the, I have a longer one. I get the clips to get people to watch. So that thing about Sylvester Stallone's uh, message will definitely yeah. be a clip. <laughs> so it's, oh, cool. All right. So I would, yeah. 